Thirsty Thursday, babies. Welcome to HQ Trivia. I'm your host with the most, holding it down from coast to coast, smooth as the butter that you put on your toast. You know how you get your toast, and then you butter it. It's smooth, like me. Yeah, the one and only money flipping Matt Richards, aka Matt was funny. Last season, millions of age cuties earned a whole lot of points helping them win big bucks. So we brought them back. For every point earned by H quizzes this season, the prize is gonna keep on building, okay? Bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger till the season finale at the end of February. Let's check in on that prize, babies. Oh my stars and garters! $68,157. That's, whoo! Whoo, it's, it's climbing, y'all. It's, nobody knows just how high it's gonna go. So, you win points by answering questions correctly. Sharing to social from the HQ app, okay? That's another way. Points help you reach levels. Leveling up gives you free passes. A free pass lets you get a question wrong and stay in the game. The higher your level, the more free passes you have. And you can climb as high as level 10. Look at it go, look at it go! Ho <laughs> ho! That was level 10. If you hit 10, that means you'd only have to answer a couple questions correctly to win HQ for the entire season. And like I said, this season we're giving out more money than we did last season. So buckle your seatbelts. Click it. To kick it. Yeah. Y'all remember how to play, right? Okay, I'm gonna give you 12 questions. They start out easy, but they get harder than trying to prune a bonsai tree with chopsticks. You could try, but you're only, you're only gonna get like one leaf, one little tiny leaf at a time. Never mind. Okay. To play the game, you got 10 seconds to tap the right answer. You get them all correct, and you win. You win. Tonight, we got $5,000 up for the taking. How much of that money will you be making? Look at us. Back to the money, y'all. Yeah, we listened. We heard you. And it's back. It's money time. I can officially call myself Money Flipping Matt Richards again. Yes. Okay. Here we go. You're gonna want an extra life and erasers, okay? Extra lives help you stay in the game after you get a question wrong. You can buy one now if you see them on your screen. Also, an eraser eliminates one of the wrong answers, giving you a 50-50 chance of getting it right. Remember, you can only use one per game, not on the final round, okay? Cool beans. Pew, pew, pew. Right before we start, I gotta tell y'all, uh, Sunday, babies, we're doing Grammy Trivia Nights. That's right, we'll be live at 9 p.m. with $10,000 up for grabs. That's a lot of shmoney. You don't want to miss it, okay? Y'all ready to start the game? Before we start the game, I just got to tell you this. Uh, shout out to Mama Catherine and her family. I know they lost uh, power, so they, they're playing HQ to light up the house right now. That's why I wore this bright tie. Yes. Look, brightness. Okay, cool. Let's do the game. Here we go. Question number one. What are the opening words of the Bible? Yo, VIP, let's kick it. Hark, who goes there? Or, in the beginning. You guys know the Bible, right? Cool. Cool. All right, there's a lot of ways you can start a book, right? But let's give some credit for going with what might be the clearest, simplest option. In the beginning. That's how it starts. 330,698. Just got that one correct. You're moving on to question number two. But before that, have you heard the word? Hello, word nerds! Yeah! We got a new live game show called HQ Words. It's where you solve word puzzles and win some cash. If you know how to spell, you know how to win. Okay, come out and play and win some money. Words is coming up next, right after trivia. So sit back, relax, and get ready, it's hosted by the word nerd herself, Anna Royceman. If you wanna try it out, tap that button right now. Just tap it right now. Tap, 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 tap. Tappity tap, tap, y'all. That's how you subscribe. Okay, Q2, what you gonna do? Benjamin Franklin is famous for his pioneering experiments with what energy source? Wind, nuclear fission, or electricity? 
What's it gonna be? Well, all right. I mean, Franklin only lived until about 1790, uh, so nuclear stuff was pretty much off the table. And wind? Folks been using wind for a really long time. Windmills, anyone? Yeah, but his life was well-timed to figure out electricity. Boogie, woogie, woogie, and you can't hold it. It's electric. Boogie, woogie, woogie, but you know it's there. Here, there, and everywhere. I got to move. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Come let me take you all up. We're going to question three. Let's go. Here we go. Which is a common variety of tea? Prince Albert, Earl Grey, or Lady Di? A common variety of tea. 21 Savage knows quite a bit about tea. Yes, but for real, uh, that's, that's a whole other situation going on. That's crazy. Free 21. Uh, here's a weird hint. Did you watch a lot of Star Trek? Hmm? Next Generation in particular. Then you'd know that Captain Picard often strolled up to the food replicator and said, Tea. Earl Grey. Hot. Because it's a famous classic tea. 30, uh, 323,394. Just got that one right. You're moving on to question number four. Bloop. Here we go. Which of these characters is not known for loving Italian food? The Ninja Turtles, Garfield, or SpongeBob SquarePants? What's it? I love Italian food, personally. Oh, unlimited salad and breadsticks. I know I'm gonna catch a lot of flack. I'm, I'm not gonna say the name of the chain, but that's, a lot of people say that's not real Italian food. I happen to. Never mind. Okay, here we go. You can't watch too much of the turtles without bumping into their passion for pizza. And Garfield straight up needs the lasagna. Okay? Yes, but unless Bikini Bottom is in the Mediterranean, Krabby Patties are not Italian. SpongeBob SquarePants was your answer there. He lives in a pineapple under the sea. He ain't got no Italian food. Come on. 295,351 are moving on. Here we go. Ah, 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 ah. Question five. Question five. Ah, ah, ah. Question five, how you have? Question five, babies. Let's go to work. Which of these games was invented in the 19th century? Chinese checkers, backgammon, or mahjong? Hmm? What's it gonna be? Let's see. Folks have been playing mahjong since at least the Qing Dynasty in the, was that 1600s? Yeah, that's way later than backgammon, which is old AF. It's thousands of years old, but Chinese checkers were invented in 1892 in, you guessed it, Germany. <laughs> Guten Abend, Fräulein. Chinese checkers, y'all. 101,719 got that one right. A lot of y'all got it wrong, and that's a Savage Question Song. Savage Question Song. Sorry you got it wrong. Savage Question Song. That's a Savage Question Song. Savage Question. Oh, I'm slimming down. You better go ahead, money flipper. I just caught myself to the side. I said, oh, you better. Ooh, Sally's treating me right. Sally's treating me right tonight. Okay, question number six. On the island of Borneo, which nation shares its borders with the other two? Malaysia, Indonesia, or Brunei? What's it gonna be? All right, Borneo. It's the world's third biggest island, and three countries share it. There's Brunei, which is so small, it's the least likely to border the two other nations, so it makes sense that Eastern Malaysia would come in between it and Indonesia. Malaysia, babies. What, what? Yeah, 91,264. I'm moving on to question number siete. Number seven. Let's go to work. Which of these well-known products is not patented? Play-Doh, Scotch Tape, or WD-40? What's it gonna be? Y'all, y'all, the chat, I, I can see y'all, cause this is live, y'all keep telling me to do the Carlton. I don't want to, I don't wanna, but I do it cause I love you. It's not unusual to HQ with anyone. Ba -da -da -da. It's not unusual to HQ with anyone. And when I see you trying out apps without me, <laughs> I'll break your screen. Okay, here we go. Did you get the answer? 
Okay, Plato, Scotch Tape, or WD-40. One of these is not patented. Patenting your idea is a good move to keep people from ripping it off, all right? But there's a catch. You got to reveal your secret recipe. So for the past 65 years, man can only wonder at the magic ingredients. WD-40. Oh, yeah, okay, that was almost savage. 45,688, got that right. WD-40, sounds a lot like E-40. Ooh. Girl, I was shaking and acting a donkey. Okay, here we go, question eight. What kind of animal is the only non-human to appear in the title of a Shakespeare play? Bird, mammal, or fish? Break it down like this. Shakespeare's titles almost always feature people, like historical figures, wives, and kingsmen. But sometimes it's nice to get a metaphorical animal in there. You know what I'm saying? Like in The Taming of the Very Mammalian Shrew. Mammals, y'all. Dang, that's savage. Okay, first thing, and I just gotta let y'all know, some people's like, oh, I don't like when you do the Savage Question song. It makes, the people, it makes me feel bad, because I say I'm sorry in the song. Okay, I'm apologizing for you getting it wrong. So with that said, Savage Quest Song. Sorry, you got it wrong. Savage Quest Song. That's the Savage Quest Song. That's why you got to get the extra lives, baby. Okay, get yourself back in the game. Treat yourself. Don't cheat yourself. Come on now. Question nine. I'm feeling fine. I hope y'all are as well. What actor filmed Lord of the Rings while secretly wearing a sports jersey under his costume? Viggo Mortensen, Elijah Wood, or Orlando Bloom? I mean, when you really love a team, you will walk into Mordor for them. And if you love the Montreal Canadiens enough, you'll wear their jersey under your costume for three of the biggest films of all time, just like Viggo Mortensen. He got to stay warm while he was out there fighting the orcs. The Orcs and the, the Urukai. I love Lord of the Rings. Uh, 6,157 are moving on to question number 10. Here we go again, my friends. The SI-derived unit of radioactivity is named for a colleague of whom? Albert Einstein, Marie Curie, or Nikola Tesla? This is the SI-derived unit of radioactivity we're talking about here. All right. All three made their mark on physics, but you can't give SI units a long run on name. You gotta pick one person, and it was Henry Becquerel. Yeah, he shared the Nobel for discovering radioactivity with the Curies. 5,319. Got that one, you're moving on to question 11. All dogs go to heaven. Let's go, here it is. Which of these is an anagram for a U.S. state? Ripe monster, seven ponies, or dialed horns? <laughs> Anagrams, y'all. Anagrams. Don't tell me you graduated elementary school without learning all the, all, the, all, the, all the state anagrams. Huh? That was the first thing I learned in kindergarten. All the states. I'm, I'm totally kidding. There's a lot of these. But from now on, if you see Rhode Island, I bet you'll think, ah, an anagram for dialed horns. <laughs> Woo! That's a Savage Question song! Okay! <coughs> savage Question Thrice! That is not really nice! Savage Question Thrice! That's the third Savage Question song. Third Savage Question! Third Savage Question! Woo! 1,274. Just got that right. Before we go to question 12, I want to remind you guys, words is coming up next. HQ words right after HQ trivia. So keep your phone close, babies. Especially Mama Catherine. I hope the lights are on by now, but if they're not, you can keep lighting the house up with, uh, with HQ words. Here we go. Question 12. Question 12. What's that smell? Smells like money. It, see, it smells like money. I can smell the money. I've been, I kept saying it, and I still smell the money. We're giving out $5,000 tonight. Smells like money. Yeah. Follow me at Matt Was Funny. Here we go. What music is not on UNESCO's list of intangible cultural heritage? Reggae, mariachi, or jazz? This is UNESCO's list of intangible cultural heritage. UNESCO established these lists to acknowledge and call attention to significant cultural traditions. But so far, no elements have been chosen from the list for the United States. So, jazz 
is out. Jazz was the right answer. We have 588 winners. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> I mean, come on now. Woo! That's wild. 588 winners, just one HQ. Hey, all right, Zona Bucks, you in the game, baby, with 851 for you, Courtney W. Your face is turning all blue, it's creepy. I like it, though. 850 for you, Marty Vivian, uh, I guess. 850. Shitty, Shinri, Sandro Claus. Chris Beatty, Joan Elliott, and they, Angam. This is a big prize. Big old prize. Look at that. You're welcome, baby. Don't say Matt never did nothing for you, okay? I brought the money back. We brought the money back, y'all. You did it. Welcome to the HQ leaderboard. Don't forget, words is just seconds away, so don't even lock your phone. Also, come back tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance at another $5,000. I've been your host, Matt Richards, a.k.a. Matt Was Funny. Holla at your boy on the social medias, okay? Remember, the more you play, the more we pay. I'll catch y'all later. I am so slim and simple.